Coach Mason here with Dr. Dish Basketball. I am joined today uh, with a very, very, very special guest, a good friend of mine, actually a former teammate as well, Jamar Diggs. Jamar, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Good to hear from you, Jefferson. Good to sound like you're in good spirits, so it's good to hear from you, buddy. That's awesome. So for a little background for people that don't know, Jamar is actually from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, same area as me. We actually uh, graduated the same year, if I recall correctly. Um, he played for one of the, the best high school basketball teams uh, in Minnesota. Um, very, very good coach over there. He played with a lot of great players. Um, and then me and him were actually very fortunate to play our rookie year together uh, for Web Mobile Baskets in Paderborn, which was uh, in 2011, I want to recall. So me and, and Jamar go way back. Um, he's had a fantastic career, uh, nine plus years. I think you're going on your 10th year, right? That is correct, going on year number 10. Number 10. So he's been really trucking along. And the great thing about Jamar is, is he's progressively gotten better every year. So I'm super excited uh, to go through and talk a little bit more in depth on his basketball career, uh, what he's doing over there. So without further ado, we're going to jump in here uh, just to get going. So, Jamar, I know really high level. I, I talked about you being a, a nine you know, year pro and, uh, you know, where you're from and all that. But give us an idea of some of the countries that you've played in so far and, um, you know, how, how it's been playing overseas so far. All right. Well, basically, you know, like you said, it's going into my 10th year. This ninth, this ninth year kind of ended, ended abruptly with this, this global pandemic. But I can talk a little bit about my past. I, I played in some of the countries are, are Germany, from Poland to a country called Cyprus. It's an island country in the Mediterranean off the, off the island. I mean, off the uh, Sea of Turkey. I've played in a small country named Kosovo. I've played in Lithuania. I've played in Latvia. I mean, I've been all over. Currently, I'm in France and I've been here the past three years. So I'm kind of a journeyman. I kind of been all over the place in the beginning of my career, but after a few successful and, and pretty good seasons, I found a home here in France and I've been here pretty, pretty for the long haul lately, last three years. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you inter what interested me in, in that was that you talked a little bit about being a journeyman. I know when I played, you know, for four or five years, um, I was playing in a different country every single year. And for me yeah. personally, obviously I wanted to, uh, continue to get to the highest level that I could and, and make the most money. But, you know, at a certain point in time, you kind of want to slow things down a little bit. Um, you know, talk a little bit about that journey and kind of bouncing around and all the things that it kind of, uh, the toll it puts on you and your body and, and how you adjust to a different countries, you know, bounce around like that. Yeah. When you're, you're coming out of the States, let's say mo most guys that end up playing professional basketball you know you go to a high school and you might have changed one high school you know you're not bouncing around four times different schools and university you may have went to one or two and that's probably about it most guys haven't gone to four or five you know so when you get overseas you get to you get to one team you meet your teammates you come my first year as you mentioned earlier was germany and you get there you meet your teammates and however the year goes successful or not playing not it's an inexperience itself and then when that season finished you're usually going on somewhere else and it's kind of a saying overseas you're, you're playing for your next your next paycheck and usually that next paycheck is somewhere else it's kind of in a different country it could be halfway across europe could be in south america could be in asia you know guys bounce around so for me personally you know i had to get used to that knowing that where i am now is not kind of the final end it's as you said is going taking a step trying to get to the highest level possible for yourself you know each guy's highest level is different but for myself personally that that took me to many different countries even two countries in the same year having a great year getting bought out by a team to go to another country or you know another story is financial hardships and teams and so you end up being able to leave but for me personally it, again just bouncing from country to country you have to learn how to adapt you know, and change to the style of play in each country where maybe here in, in Eastern Europe is more physical, more tactical, where in, in Western Europe is more about athleticism. And, you know, going into it, you may not you may not know that because you don't have the experience, like I said, as being a rookie or being a first or second year guy. But, you know, now year nine, going on year 10, I'm, I'm kind of an OG, kind of a vet, they say. And, you know, I've I seen it all and I kind of don't want to say I know it all, but I have that experience. So that's helped me through this whole process. Yeah, and I know that, you know, when I played personally, our rookie year, when we played in Germany, we played up and down. We were super fast. We were, our goal was to score over 
100 points a game. So we were getting a ton of shots up. And, you know, initially for me, that was a style that I played, you know, kind of in high school and then for sure my my last couple of years in college. So the transition for me was was pretty easy. But a couple of years later, I actually played in Romania, which was much slower, uh, like you said, much more physical. Um, the style of play was different. And for me, uh, it was very difficult to adjust. Even though I had played, you know, a couple of years, it was very hard for me to adjust my game. And what I realized at that moment in time, is if I wanted to play another uh, couple of years or prolong my career, I needed to be able to adjust. And I think that you hit on that perfectly because the guys that are able to stick around the longest are the ones that are able to adjust. So that's oh. awesome to hear that you've been able to apply that. Oh, for, definitely. And, and, you know, a lot of the times when you get to this level, it's not all about talent. You know, it's about being able to adapt your game, your mental, your everything, being in different country in, in a foreign place. And, you know, you may used to having the ball in your hands all the time and being the man in college where you come to Europe and you may have to change positions or, or do something else. And being able to uh, adjust and adapt your style of play, depending on the country, depending on the coach. You can be in Germany, like you mentioned, with a coach that wants to, you know, be a high-paced coach, but you also could have a different coach who wants to slow it down, you know. To, to have longevity, that's kind of been the most important thing for me is, you know, that's allowed me to, to feel like my career has been somewhat of a success because it's it's tough, man. It's not it's not something that's easy. So being able to adjust again, like reiterating what you said is, is very important. So you played in a, a lot of countries like we talked about before. A couple questions here for you. What's the favorite country uh, that you've played in so far? And tell us maybe one um, really good memory so far that you've had playing overseas. Uh, man, to, to be, uh, to answer your first question, uh, the, the, the country that's probably the, the best that I've been played in actually not, you know, visited, but played in is, is Lithuania. Uh, this is for basketball reasons. Uh, it was a combination of the style of play that I like is more about high IQ, more about sharing. And I mean, people watch the old San Antonio Spurs, how they move the ball and share the ball. That's kind of how the Lithuanian league was. And me, I'm not so much of an individual guy. You know, I have my own skill set, but I like the, the team game. So in that country for basketball, it was is amazing. I, our team was able to be very successful. I had a successful individual career. I, I mean, individual season there. I was the MVP of the league. We were playing and all throughout Europe, going to Greece, going to France, and we kind of made some upsets and went kind of far for our team. That was then what it was expected. So for me, it's Lithuania. But on the flip side, as I've gotten older, it's not just about basketball being over here. It's about the quality of life and things of that nature. And so I'd have to throw another country in there. That would be Cyprus, where I played maybe three seasons. And to be honest, it's just a beautiful place. It's an island on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the weather is always beautiful. And for me, just living there and playing basketball was amazing. So I'd have to throw those two countries, Lithuania, just for the basketball portion of it. But Cyprus is the, the quality of life. And again, France and all these other places that I have been are amazing. But those two would I have to throw at the top of my list. That's awesome to be here. I know that that's a big thing that you have to balance, especially as you get older, uh, is, is you know, your playing opportunity, the money that you're making and the place that you're spending, you know, 10 or 11 months of, of the year. I mean, obviously, yeah. a lot of overseas guys, uh, they'll come back for a month or two and they'll leave. Some guys now stay over there, um, yep. and, you know, make it their home. So you got to be in a place that you feel comfortable. Otherwise, you know, you miss home quite a bit. So I can understand that 110 percent now. Um, you've been playing since you're really, really young. I don't even know when you started playing. Obviously, I've yep. known you from high school, but yep. um, talk a little bit about how your training has evolved over time. I'm sure that your training in high school changed from college to now being a 10-year pro, and I'm assuming maybe even some of your training has, has, has evolved a little bit over those years. Talk a little bit about how that's evolved for you over time. Personally, uh, it, okay, that's from, from high school, let's say, you know, I, I was I played for a coach who considered himself like a college coach, but a lot of guys in high school, you know, it's all about you know the running and the the, the sprints and being in shape and kind of usually the most talented guys kind of stick around in high school level and then you get to college and the, so me at, in high school the training for me was just trying to keep up to be honest you know I wasn't highly recruited I wasn't you know highly touted so for me it was just keep pushing myself to to try to get better at something and it's maybe all aspects of the games I need to become a better ball handler I need to become a better finisher like this so on and so forth then you get to college and you start 
kind of forming your game a little bit, but you're still young. You know, you're, you're kind of basing things off just not just athleticism, but it's similar to high school, just a little better. And for me, that training in high school was, I mean, in college, let's say, the training in college was what coaches said. You know, it's kind of what you're with your coaches maybe 10 months out of a year. So it's kind of your coach wants you to do this, you're going to do this. So this is what we're going to work on. And when I do individual training back home in the summer, me is about being in the best shape possible being in condition because if I wasn't in condition then I wouldn't be able to do that the things that a college coach needed now leading to a professional that's where everything completely changed for me I look back at all those years and I I don't knock how I worked out or how I trained I just wasn't training efficiently so as I became a pro and especially with more experience I learned how to train more efficiently you know working working hard I mean working working smart not not just hard you know the same how the saying goes so for me it was more pinpointing my strengths and my weaknesses and maybe as a as a younger pro or even in colleges you may have weaknesses and you try to you try to get better at them and this and that for me personally as I got to year six to year seven to year eight it's focusing on my strengths. This game of basketball, even at the NBA level, is it's a lot of specialization. You know, the guys that are not specialized are the the, the top percent, which is Kevin Durant, which is LeBron James, which is Steph Curry. Those guys can do all that, but a lot of other guys is you specialize in your role. So for me, my training began to focus on, you know, what am I good at in perfecting my strengths? If it's from playing pick and roll, if it's the reading a defense, if it's the jump shooting, if it's the shooting the basketball. That's how my training began to evolve. It became to become more efficient. And, you know, instead of spending t six, seven hours in the gym using my left hand, not knocking it, that it does, it, it makes progress. For me at a, a certain age, it, it wasn't going to help me as much as I thought as, you know, getting better at pick and rolls, things that I do. So it was turning my work to more game oriented, not just individual skills, more what am I going to do in the game? Where am I going to get my shots in the game? And especially when I get in a situation like I am now, let's say where I've been in France three years, I, I played on the same team where I know specifically like what plays are run, where I'm going to get shots, how I'm going to get shots. You know, I'm not going to be shooting that many shots in the corner. So when I'm in the gym, doesn't mean I'm not going to shoot in the corner is majority of my shots are coming from the higher up on the arc. So I'm going to shoot majority of my shots there. Just working smarter for me personally, not knocking how other people work. Just me. That's how I that's how my training has evolved. Well, I think if there's high school and, and college, and, and, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of pro players listening to this as well, I think that they follow your sentiment of you got to be able to adapt, you have to be able to train smart, and obviously you've been playing, you know, going on your 10th year overseas playing pro, there's not a lot of guys that are able to do that. I know even myself, I felt like I was a great basketball player, and my career ended, you know, four or five uh, yeah. years in. I know other guys that were much highly touted players than maybe you or I, more athletic, so on and so forth. But when you can really think the game and understand the game at a high level like yourself, that's yeah. where you're going to be able to find success, longevity in your career because you're not only relying on your athleticism, you're relying on your brain, your leadership, your ability to, like you said, train the, the proper way and and again that's kudos to you for you know the sex, success in that yeah now, but I, I don't mean to interrupt i don't mean to interrupt you but i want to reiterate like the, the other way it's not wrong you know just for me it's for me personally it's it's you know maybe if i did spend six hours in the gym working on my left hand maybe i could be at a, a different level or a higher level who knows but for me personally it was the about like you said with the iq and the training just training smarter in the proper way you know i don't need to be in the gym two hours i can be in 45 minutes and get stuff done and you know i have to be able to balance you know that work and you know my mental side of the mental side too so you know it's not just the physical aspect of it you know as you start getting up there in age you know you want to be able to balance your life and the game and because the game for me now is a job you know this is my this is my work you know so i as well as how hard i want to train you know i want to be able to enjoy my off the court as well so it's a balance for me i hear that now uh you know following that train of uh of thought you've come into the dish lab in in, in minnesota plenty of times yep. you've been able to get in there and get shots up and and i can tell you he, he's not lying he gets in you know 45 uh minutes to an hour really really hard workout really focused workout um and then he goes about his business but the cool thing is is i get a chance to come in there and, and peek in and see what he's doing and you know, oftentimes he's, he's out there using the Dr. Dish shooting machine, getting a ton of shots up. 
Um, as far as I know, I think you guys do have a Dr. Dish, uh, you know, machine where you're at. But talk a little bit about how the Dr. Dish shooting machine has kind of helped you get the reps and, and, and the training that you need, especially in the off season. Oh, man, it's amazing. You know, we do have one on the on, with our team now, but I'll speak specifically on the off season. You know, the Dr. Dish allows me to basically not rely on anybody to get better you know it's and it makes it more efficient as i talked about more uh earlier you know for me to train and get 400 to 500 you know however many shots up in a short amount of time whereas if i was by myself or depending on a coach or a trainer or somebody to come along it, it makes it a little more difficult so for me that's probably like one of the biggest things that has improved in my career from the beginning to now is my shooting you know and dr dish has provided that because i've been able to get you know, as many shots up as I want to get, you know, and especially be, being able to play music and stuff like that. I love that. But Dr. Dish is, you know, it's been amazing for me. It's specifically for me personally, improved my shooting drastically. So I, I do love being able to come up to the lab in the summer and get shots up and, you know, go about my day. But as well, we have one here on the team and, you know, it's part of our training regimen, you know, our coach, you know, maybe give us a morning off, but, you know, guys go up in the gym, you got, you know, four or five hour different time slots and we, anybody can go in there and shoot and we'll go as partners, we'll go by ourselves and make a game out of it. It's, it's pretty cool that the, the, the machine is allowed me to train more efficiently and better. And I, I really do, I do love it. That's awesome to hear. So funny, uh, funny little thing about our rookie year for those that are listening. So um, everybody sees me on, um, they see me on the social media. They see me doing all these shooting drills. I've, I've become a much better shooter now than I actually was in high school, college, and even when I played professionally, which mm -hmm. is crazy. And I actually, I, I attribute that to the usage of the document shooting machine that we have at our headquarters. But funny thing is, I can remember when you, you and I played our rookie year together and, uh, you know, we'd be running up and down. And I remember we're, we'd be on fast breaks and uh, you toss me up, Al, you appear there. And I remember there's a period of time, too, where I started, you know, trying to run out to the three-point line. And I, I can <laughs> all clear the day. You say, Mace, 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 you know, get inside, get inside, go, you know, go yeah. to the lot or cut across or whatnot. Because, yeah. you know, my strength was not shooting the basketball. And I always yeah. look back to myself now to this day, kind of like what you said. If I would have had, you know, the Dr. Dish shooting machine or something like that, where in the off scenes I could get up thousands and thousands of shots, shots and I was Man. training more efficiently in the right way you know who knows the amount of success more that I would have had in college or you know my my years playing professionally or if even my career would have been prol prolonged a little bit more so I mean for you to be able to have something like that um you know at hand whether that's in the off season or during the season uh you know I know it's got to help Oh man, it's truly, been, truly, extremely beneficial, man. And like you said, if you did have that early on, it might have been a little different because you, you would run to that, you would run to that three point line. I'm like, Mace, man, go to the basket. But with, with, if, with the dish, I, even if you know, I would have saw your results. You might, it might have been even better. You know, like like our teammate Justin Stomas who could really shoot. He's running to the three point line. Go, go, let it fly. You know, so that Dr. Dish is an amazing machine. That's awesome. That's awesome. So obviously we have the pandemic going around worldwide um, here yep. in America. It's it's been going crazy in certain areas in Minnesota, where we're from. Uh, it's a little bit different, but we've kind of been shut down. I know people yep. out there are interested. You know, you're yep. in a, a foreign country. You're out there with your people. Um, you know, talk a little bit about uh, your life and what's going on in France with the, the pandemic right now. And, and are you able to train or, or what can you do right now? Yeah, yeah, it's it's very unique, you know. Uh, how I would say, you know, in France, it kind of it started early, not as early as China, but you know, we started seeing some things coming towards France in February, let's say, around the news that you know there's this virus that was in Asia and it's starting to get worse. But we'll just keep an eye on it. And I think, like a lot of people, I don't, you know, a lot of places they just weren't really prepared for it. And here, yeah, let's say, like the last week or two of february in the beginning of a march you know they kind of made some rules about games where you know to avoid fans or the players getting sick that they would uh, uh close the arena so we were playing games actually without fans or with about 50 fans and then we started to realize man this is this is it's kind of picking up then all of a sudden there was a a, a government stated uh shutdown and it just shut down i think it was march 11th march 10th uh we got put on quarantine. And so for me personally, you know, I have my family here, I have my wife, I have my child, you know, it's kind of a unique, you, you want to you want to be safe. You know, I just wanted to be safe. I, I kind of, I don't know, should I go to America? And 
uh, uh, the US government announces something like uh, we're closing the borders. So it's like panic going in. But currently I'm under contract and my contract is not terminated. So I can't leave. So it's like, well, am I stuck in France? Can I go home? Do I break my contract? Is it even safe to go to America? Because at the time, like we're seeing now, you know, you were behind us here in France. So what was happening in France, you could assume that was going to happen in America pretty soon as it is. So it was for me making a decision like I, I'm not going to rush back to America. You know, maybe Minnesota is a little not as bad as other places. But again, I just didn't want to put myself in a, in a strange situation or even more unstable situation. So I decided to stay here, but there's no training, no, no, the season is suspended. It's not officially canceled. It's suspended because they're trying to find a way to make us play again, but they won't, you, you know, the Olympics are canceled, things are canceled. They're just trying to find a way to postpone and earn some money somehow, some way. But again, we're, we're kind of stuck at home. So training with a basketball in the gym is not possible for me uh, because I'm not able to even go outside for more than an hour without less than, I think it's, it's fit, like 500 kilometers. I mean, not 500 kilometers, half a kilometer from here. It's it's not much you can do. So I my training is all physical. I may go for a run in that short distance. I may work out at home, you know, but again, it's more me just trying to keep my mental mental okay you know physically i'm fine but you know worrying about family members back home in america or you know as a lot of people are dealing with uh unemployment you know i've been blessed that I'm, my contract is not terminated so i still do get paid i'm currently employed but a lot of people have lost jobs but worrying about oh, will they terminate the job or our job will they end our season will i get paid things of that nature so it's pretty unique uh, i'm safe uh, i feel safe you know i'm just at home with my family and Right now, just on the balcony, enjoying the beautiful weather here in France. But you know, hoping things get better everywhere around the world. I hope people stay safe. I hope their families are okay, and people can, you know, this too shall pass. I hope so. We just, I'm just riding it out. No training, no gym. You know, they 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 did mention that maybe in May that facilities will open up. But you know, me personally, I may not even go. I may not even risk it. You know, I'm just gonna ride it out. So. That's 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 what's going on here in France. It's it's pretty much locked down. It's pretty much locked down. Not much to do. All right. Well, it seems like you got a good perspective on on kind of what's going you know on yeah. in the world and in your specific area and and staying prepared. That's one of the the most important things you know that that I took out of that. And one thing for everybody out there listening, you know, that I can say for sure about Jamar is he's probably one of the most professional people. Uh, that I've met, you know, in my entire life. If you've been listening to this to this point, you know that he's obviously well spoken, um, and you got to do some things right to be a, a 10 ten year vet. Uh, from the day he stepped into the gym, you know, and and you know we started working out in uh, Germany, I could tell that this guy mental was on a different level, and and he was a professional. And we went through a lot of ups and downs in that year, even though it was super successful. I mean, a lot of crazy ups and downs, and I know personally for Jamar, he had some ups and downs, but he never wavered with his mental. There's times I remember me and you talking and you telling me, Mace, just stay the course and just yep, keep yep. going. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. And yep. uh, that really kept me focused and helped me. And, and so your professionalism and, and your ability to lead is, is, you know, at another level. And I think that a lot of players um, haven't figured that out. They haven't been able to tap into that if it's there. Um, so I want to ask you before we get out of here, you know, what 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 does it mean to be a professional? You know, even you can even go back to, to college, because even when you get to college, it's almost like you become a professional in a way there. But yep. talk to me a little bit about the ways that you've been able to maintain your professionalism and what it looks like to be a professional. I appreciate first I want to say I appreciate the kind words about me, but it means a lot to hear that from you, you know, a good friend and a colleague as well. So I appreciate that. But uh, for me, pro for professionalism, you know, I think it, it it doesn't just come with experience, but I've had to become better at it over time. You know, uh, me, myself personally, I, I felt like, you know, I, I wanted to be respectful to people and treat people. And I had a, a, a basis of maturity about myself that, you know, regardless of success, not technical success, but ups and downs, failures, playing well, good game, bad game, you know, you kind of want to stay steady, you know, because you can ride yourself on this emotional roller coaster and it'll take you all over the place. But, you know, if you can stay steady and stay calm through a lot, it'll help you. And I have been through a lot of personal stuff in my life when I was younger that it shaped me that way that, you know, 
nobody's going to really feel sorry for you. Nobody's going to really care about you besides your loved ones. So, you know, you got to go about it the best way that you can. So for me, I took that into work ethic. I took that, you know, professionalism is not just how you may speak to people or how you treat other people. It's also how serious are you going to take this game? How serious are you going to take this work? You know, me, when I got out of, in high school, like I said before, I wasn't highly touted. I, I wasn't highly recruited. But I told myself, man, I, I wanted to be Division One player. I want to, I want, I can make it. I know I can. And I, immediately I went Division Two. And even then, I, it didn't stop me that I said, you know, I'm just going to have this professional mindset to keep working to get achieve my goals. Went, ended up transferring to a Division One. Ended up doing well there. I'm not going to go into that whole story about all that. But for me, it was just about how serious am I want to take this. And I wanted to provide for my family and I wanted to use the game of basketball to do that. You know, just like I was able to use the game of basketball to provide my education. I wanted to be able to do that with the game of basketball as well to provide financially for myself and my family and my loved ones. And, you know, I, with that mindset, I've been able to just keep striving. And throughout here, this Europe, you know, it's a little different. I don't want to say I haven't been in the NBA, so I don't know how things are run. You know, here's a little shady, you know, with agents and coaches and different countries and payments late. And for me, I, when I first got into it, like you said, that year in Germany, you know, it was a shock. It was like, wow, you know, they're, how they do things. The the young 15-year-old kids playing over me. Why? Just because he's from the area. He's not better than me. And, you know, things like that. Personally, it, it, it took me aback, but I had to learn, like, no matter what they do to me or no matter how I may play or whatever, I can still treat people the right way. I can still, you know, karma is real. I believe in karma, so I just try to lead and be the best that I can. And, you know, coach can look at me on face and be like, you're not a good player. And I'll be like, okay, because I know there's a few coaches that do feel like I'm a good player. And I'm going to take that internally and push it in my work ethic. So I know that's a lot of me saying, I I'm saying a lot there, but for me, it's just the professionalism is how I treat people how I treat people with respect, but also the work ethic that I'm going to put in. And that combination, it didn't come, you know, easy. It didn't come at 17. It didn't come at 18. You know, it was a learning process. But And I'm still learning, you know, as I transition, let's say, out of the game, you know, into, into the workforce, into a different field, you know. I'm, I'm still learning. And I feel like if you take it step by step, day by day, and you take it serious, you can make the progress necessary to become a better leader, become more professional. So that's 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 my end of it. I agree wholeheartedly. I think, like you said, this is why I wanted you on, because there's so many people out there that ask me questions like this about training and professionalism and the mental piece of it. And, you know, some guys figure it out, some guys never do. And, and obviously, True. you had a chance to really figure some things out. And, and like you said, every year is another opportunity for you to continue to grow it. You know, me, me personally, I really appreciate you taking the time to jump on this webinar with me and, and, you know, give some really cool nuggets and insight on, on your life and what you're doing. Uh, so for those out there that want a little bit more information that want to follow Jamar, his IG handle, um, if you want to check him out is J J A Y digs five. You can check him out. It's a ton of cool pictures. He has a lot of cool stuff on there that he posts about, you know, highlights and whatnot from the season, all the different places he's played and traveled. Uh, his beautiful family, so on and so forth. So make sure you go give him a follow. And if you want to hear more information on how players like Jamar train on the Dr. Dish shooting machines, make sure you check our website out at drdishbasketball.com or you can find us on all social channels at Dr. Dish B-Ball. So make sure you check us out. Jamar, my friend, my dear friend, thank you so much for taking the time jumping on with us. I appreciate you having me. Thank you to Dr. Dish for giving me this platform. Uh, hopefully some of this information can be helpful to somebody and somebody out there listening. Just keep working and I wish you the best. And it's good hearing from you, Jefferson, and keep you and your family and everybody safe over there. All right, my man, you stay safe and you take care. We'll talk to yep. you later. All right, take care.